Hello, you're very welcome to Season 2, Episode 8 of the Final Whistle.ie podcast on the League of Ireland. I'm your host, Kieran Callum. We've got an action-packed show here for you this evening, so we hope that you will stay with us. Coming in next in a couple of minutes is the Treaty United um, Treaty United captain, Jack Lynch, will be having a chat with us all things about what's happening on Shannon's side. After that, we will have a pre-recorded interview with uh, Derry City midfielder, Patrick McElhenney. As part of a new feature that we have here on the programme, we'll also be uh, going around the grounds with some post match interviews so we'll be hearing from Dundalk manager Stephen O'Donnell from Gary Cronin of Longford Town and from Sam Long of Drogheda United. Later on the programme, we will have Dean McEnany of Longford Town, who'll be having a chat with us, and wrapping up the show, we'll have a look at the results and the fixtures of what's happening in the League of Ireland this week. But taking us in to the first segment of our programme is Jack Lynch of Treaty United. I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Treaty United captain Jack Lynch. Jack, you're very welcome to the programme. Thanks very much for having me, lads. My pleasure to be here. It's great. It's great to have you, Jack. First of all, a last-minute penalty to get a win last week. Um, they don't come better than that. A, a last-minute winner is always. It's always great for when you're on the side of it, but when it's when it's the opposition, it's difficult. But last-minute winners are always brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, it was a really tough game as well. Um, we knew. I mean, we we met Wexford at the the first game of the season to beat them five one, but we knew there was no way it was going to be another five one game. They've really started to kind of come into their own now, and they've nailed down a kind of style of play that they like. And we know that they have a lot of good players, and obviously we showed up. And if anyone watched the game on Friday night, arguably say that we um, maybe didn't deserve the win. But sure, look, as you say, those ninety minute winners when they go your way, they're sweet. Um, and I was delighted for Jack Brady as well. The the goal came from Jack Brady. You know, he caught the ball. Um, we brought on Willie Armshaw. He saw Willie was one-on-one the defender and, and played a, a proper stunning kick down the, the middle of the field to let Willie away. So, um, you know, I have great time for Jack as well. He's great around the dressing room and I was, I was really happy to, to, to see him involved in the winner. So, yeah, look, a big result for us because obviously they're um, in and around those kind of playoff spots as well. But as you say, it's early, it's early doors yet. We're just trying to um, get in a bit of a flow now. We've gone a couple of games unbeaten and touch wood, we can, we can keep that going for another while. You've spoken about that kind of unbeaten run there. There was two very difficult results that you had once against Gaul and the other against Cork. Sometimes those results can, you know, kind of hammer a team's confidence. It doesn't seem to be the same with you guys. It seems to have been a bit of a springboard, you know, to, to boost on to get some good results. Would that be a fair reflection or uh, am I, am I no, being, am no, I being overly harsh with you? No, you're not. You're not at all. Because I think if anyone watched, especially the Cork game, you know, that uh, and we, we had a chat amongst ourselves after that game, that just wasn't, that wasn't us. That wasn't good enough. That was nothing. That performance was not anything kind of associated with what with what we ha- we know we are about ourselves. Anyways, do you know there was no kind of hard work. It was just a, a, a poor enough result now from us and a really poor performance. But I think after those sort of games, especially what we saw last year, do you know when whenever we lost the game, we did come back and kind of bounce back. Um, we got a throbbing against Travantili last year. Um, and came back and beat Bray then, who were kind of, at the time, people thought they were going to get automatic promotion and we beat them at home. And it just seems to to be, we, we, we took a bit of a beat against Cork and we've kind of turned it around now. So um, you can throw in the mix there a couple of results that probably didn't go our way as well. You know, we probably left at loan um, thinking that we should have won. Again, probably a silly mistake from us. They tried to do a short free kick and the referee called it back and then we let them do the short free kick again and they scored. Um, and the same with Bray. We went up to Bray, and of course, they're two very good teams, but we thought we were well able to to come away with three points from both of those games, um, and we had to settle for a point in each. So, look, um, we're just trying to to tip along now. You know, as you say, we're in a bit of a rhythm. We're starting to get string a few performances together. Hopefully, we can turn those kind of draws into into wins, and that's what we managed to do against Wexford. So, as I say, touch wood now, it'll stay like that for the foreseeable future. You speak about the kind of like the the response from the four 0 loss to Cork. The immediate game was against Waterford. Waterford were deemed at the start of the year they were one of the teams that were tipped for, so to speak, you know, automatic promotion back. They're part of the supposed big three that are in the first division this this year. Hasn't really gone their way. Their manager has been sacked today, but for you guys, that was a real confidence boosting win. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that was a massive result for us, especially as you say, off the back of a a really poor performance. Never mind the result. I think what we just wanted to do when we were heading out was was kind of get back to our basics, get back to that kind of level of work rate that we saw all through last season that got us to where we were, you know, into a playoff semi-final. Um, and that was the biggest thing for us. And if we got the result, then that was a bonus. And obviously we ended up winning on the night. So 
Um, look, the lads were absolutely super that night. I wasn't involved. Obviously, I was just coming back from injury now, but um, I suppose it was it was a pleasure to be in the stand watching them because, look, it's, it, it's, it's easy for me to say that it, it, it's, it's not, or I suppose, I suppose it's not easy to, to criticise the lads, especially when you're not on the pitch. You know, I've been injured for the last eight or nine weeks now. Um, and only coming back. So, look, it, it's obviously a lot easier when the lads can go out to pitch and kind of dig you out and, and get a big result against Waterford. So, yeah, look, and, and it was a, it was a big result for, for our own confidence. It, it let us know that we were still the same sort of team that we were last year and that we hadn't lost that kind of steeliness that we that we made sort of a trademark of our play last year. So, um, as you say, it was, a, it was a massive win. And obviously, sorry to hear about Ian Morris getting... Um, let go, but I know that um, David Breen and Gary Hunter down there now reading the statement. They'll take them on to to Wexford, and they're both two super coaches who were down there when I was down there. So I'm sure they'll have um, no issues going into 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 Wexford this week. In relation to just if you can speak just about your injury, like how difficult is it for you? Like I know that speaking from from my own perspective, working within clubs, like when one of the the captain, our captain of the club that I'm involved in down here, he got injured last year with an ACL you know, he was still kind of very much involved on the sidelines and in, in the change room and stuff like that. Is is that allowed in your perspective that you're still kind of like that little bit of voice and a little bit of extra experience that you can you can impart with the players on the pitch? Or do you just let them let them be? I think it was sort of a decision I probably changed around in my mind as in at the start when it when it first happened. So I tore my quad in the last preseason game mm-hmm. before we before we played. Um and I probably wanted to have that little bit of voice um at the start and i think as the the time progressed i felt that we had enough lads around the change room like we had the likes of mark ludden's your jack brady's lads who have loads of experience and i felt that i was comfortable enough i didn't want to just be adding more more noise at at that stage i feel like the the best way i can be a captain and and lead is to lead through example on the pitch um and to be completely honest no point me uh telling you a lie here i did find it quite difficult to kind of have that influence off the pitch Maybe it's of course my age, you know, I'm I'm twenty-four. I've probably been playing in the league three or four years, and you know, you're not playing and you're trying to give advice to Mark Ludden, who's nearly, I don't know, fifty, six, something like that. Um which was tough. Plus but, fat. Yeah, plus fat, plus the rest. And um, he killed me for saying that, but you look, I'll handle that. But yeah, I, I think as you say, you have to be kind of um fluid in those situations. And I think that's mm-hmm. that's that's what I that's what I was. And look, thank God I'm I'm back playing now. I was involved on on Friday night and here's to here's to many more please God fingers crossed Jack go back to last year you signed if I'm not mistaken from Galway to Treaty you know um, mm-hmm. and then you had like an an unbelievable se- debut season under Tommy Barrett like there was a lot of articles written that like you know the, the team was assembled you know in the space of 48 hours and things like that from your perspective what enticed you to go be involved in this project because going into a new team at any level is obviously very daunting. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. It's probably an understatement as well. I mean, I left Galway more so because of my, my full-time job, you know, they were going um, full-time that year. And I have a, I work as a medical device engineer here in, um, or inside in, in Limerick and Castle Troy. So I knew from, from the get-go when they were going full-time that it wasn't going to be for me. Um, and then it was a case of trying to see, could I, could I fix up somewhere else with a part-time team? And in the meantime, I'd been talking to Tommy and he had been kind of, he hadn't kind of confirmed at that stage that Treaty were going to get the license, you know? So he was being quite open about, you know, if you get fixed up before we have confirmation of a license, you know, I, I take it because it's, it's not a definite that we're going to get in. Yeah. So like eventually we did get in, obviously and we got the license and like, I'm, I'm sure everyone's heard the story now. I mean, the first training session there could have been about, 50 or 60 people there like you know um it was a bit like a pepsi camp and we had to get everything done kind of that night the next day um obviously a couple of galway lads have come down as well and i was trying to um tie in with them and see where they're signing because obviously look i wanted to play soccer at the highest level i could but i i didn't want to be and i have no problem saying this i didn't want to be signing on for a team that was going to be going out getting getting hockey every every week you know it was it was to do my own bit of due diligence there and eventually we we ended up with a with a super squad um and look we i i knew we had a good squad um but there's only so much you can do on on three weeks of work you know we as you say we had kind of two or three weeks then to get ready for the first game there was no expectations on us um and the next sort of eight nine months after that were just a, a bit of a blur um i told people that i we wouldn't really 
understand or appreciate what we had done until we kind of had a break at Christmas. And I think that was definitely right for me. You know, I went back and watched a couple of games, a couple of results we got. Uh, it was a big season for me personally. You know, I'd never scored in the league. I scored a few goals. Um, got to play, obviously got, got into a, a first division playoff final the year before with Galway. It was good to get back into the, the playoffs again. Um, and yeah, look, it, it, it did finish on a high note as well, even though we got bait out the door by UCD at home, which wasn't um, fantastic. We did go up and, and kind of show what we were we were about in the, in the second leg and at least we were able to finish on a win, you know, even though we didn't progress into the, the first division final. So look, I think the, the year that's gone will, will be with me, especially and I think most of the lads for, for a long time. Um, obviously, we've had a couple of boys leave, but I think the, the bond that we had as that first kind of squad will will stay with us for a long time. And I'm sure in years to come, if I was to meet anyone, you know, you're your Sean McSweeney's or your Ty Grines down the down the road who have moved on now, we'd still have fond memories to talk about uh, down the road, yeah. Give them Dock a hell of a scare in the FAI Cup as well. Um, had to go to extra time. Like, yeah. I, I know. I was watching that result. I was away from home and I was watching that result going, <laughs> this could go anywhere. But it just shows yeah. to show you that you, you, you're talking there, talent, desire, hard work, all those things, they can trump anything really. And, and, and football is like that. Yeah, it sounds cliche, but look, you're you're dead right. We we set out, especially against Dundalk, with a game plan. We we set out to be organised. We set out to make it difficult, um, and that's what we did. For as you say, the bones of 120 minutes. They, I won't say they got lucky with the with the goal, but of course, Anto got sent off then, and we we felt like we had a couple of chances in the game. We even had a a chance after they scored to send it to to penalties, but look, it wasn't to be. And I think hopefully we'll be a, a force to be reckoned with come cup season this year again. Um, I think we can, we can set ourselves up to be a really strong um, cup side. Um, I was a little, little bit disappointed that probably we, we actually met Dundalk in the first round last year because I was hoping we'd go on a bit of a run. But look, hopefully we, we, we'll be able to do it this year and um, you never know what, what might happen, you know, especially when 3D United are involved. Just a couple of more questions before we wrap up. Um, first of all, like football in Limerick, I know from my experience going down there, it's the markets field in itself. It's a fantastic ground. It's... Limerick the size of it when you have the likes of you know Munster play there you've got um you know you've got the Limerick hurlers you get you know like you've got it's a real hotbed of sport that all it's missing really is uh a, a, a successful how would you say mm-hmm. successful soccer team no I look and I, I, I completely agree with you um you you compare it to to years ago when Limerick were winning first divisions and uh, they were getting into to, to cup finals and stuff like that um, go back even further when my own dad was playing you know it was the market field was was the place to be um, and yeah look we we know at the minute we're we're not where we we want to be or I suppose we've accepted where we are but we have aspirations to 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 grow and grow and grow and hopefully you know in, in years to come you never know touch what we might be you know if, if you want to go that far and then shoot for the stars you know you might get an old European tie or something like that wouldn't that be great to get to the market field and as I said look we yeah, we know we're competing with the likes of um, the, the the Limerick Hurlers and, and Munster, obviously, and they've had their massive su- success. So it's only it's only fair that we're competing with them. But look, I suppose we're asking for for people to stick with us for the for the time being. Um, I think we showed last year that there is still space for a, a soccer team in in Limerick. Like I think, especially the the one moment of last year that sticks out to me immediately is walking onto the pitch for the. The first leg of the the playoff, you know, I think there was about two and a half, three thousand people there. It was probably as big a crowd as I've played in, um, and even whatever way the result went, that atmosphere will stay with me for for a long time. And that's just proof that there's people there who who will come out and watch a, a soccer team that's successful. Um, and I think we even have people now who'll come out and watch us with the, the where we are at the minute. So hopefully, look, we'll progress. That's all we're looking to do every year is just progress, progress. Um, the board have a have an idea of where they want to be in a couple of years' time, and hopefully we'll be able to play the football that that allows us to to get there. In relation to this week's match, you're playing on Saturday night against Longford Town. They kind of had a bit of a stall to their start of the season with games postponed and things like that. But Gary Cronin seems to have a, a very um, competitive side in what is, and we've we've said this on the show time and time again. This is probably the most competitive first division that I personally have seen in the past number of years. It's just there just seems to be teams getting results from everywhere, and it's it's really exciting. Yeah, definitely. And like as I say, I thought last year was competitive. It, it's turned up a notch now again this year. You know, 
Um, you have some really strong teams up there. And even, as I say, the likes of Wexford, who we were we were probably lucky to beat the other night, I think they'll they'll take points off people. Um, Athlone, Bray, like the, the table probably doesn't do those sides justice. And um, yeah, look, as you say, we had a we had a match postponed against um Longford, but they're they're filled with super players again, you know. lads who have been in the first division for, for a long time. Um lads who are used to winning. Um they play a good style of football and we left to go up there with a game plan and try and try and impose our own plan on the game and hopefully get a result, you know. If 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 we were to go away from home there and, and pick up some sort of points, I think we'd we'd be we'd be fairly happy with ourselves. Just in relation, you know, you've got to, you had the playoff last year. Is that something that hopefully you will probably, you know, it's uh, while it's a, it, it's not automatic promotion. There's still that excitement attached to it. That's it, it, it might, it might, uh, it might go on a. You talk about like a cup run there, but there's also that promotion run as well. It's it's an exciting prospect. Yeah, definitely. And it, it, look, as soon as you get into the playoffs, at least you're you're in with a shout, you know. So. Mm-hmm. And that's what we'll be looking to do again. Again, this year we we kind of made it our mantra last year that we were taking it, you know, game by game, and we didn't want to get ahead of ourselves. And but I think I have no problem in saying this year that I think we have a squad capable of 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 performing to to that level and and finishing where we finished, if not better than than last year. And that's what we're going to plan to do. I mean, the the table looks good for us now, but there's a lot of football to be played yet. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to to continue the sort of the form we're in at the minute, get a couple of results along the way, and then as you say, come September October time, you never know you never know what could happen. So yeah, look, that's 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 where I'm looking at it, and and I'm sure the rest of the lads are looking that way as well. We're only looking up. Well, listen, Jack. Thanks very much for your time this evening. We really really appreciate, it and we wish you the best luck for the rest of the season. Hopefully, we'll be talking to you in and around the playoff time. We'll have a chat then. Fingers crossed. No problem, lads. Thanks for having me on. Thanks very much. Cheers. I'm delighted to be joined by Derry City midfielder Patrick McElhenney. Patrick, you're very welcome to the programme. Good man, how's things? Great, not a bother, not a bother. It's good to talk to you again. Um, it's been a little while. Patrick, first of all, the move from Dundalk, obviously the news broke it last July, but you obviously stayed for the rest of the season and you've moved up to back home, essentially. What was mm-hmm. the rationale behind that? Was it just, did you feel it was just time to go? I think so. I just felt it was um the right time and um you know, obviously being away and being away from family and obviously my family being away, it was just uh there was a lot of factors really. I reckon the one of the things is that obviously your daughter Sierra started school in Blackrock, but now she's moved in. She's yeah. settled in all right up up in Derry now with the big move uh, to, she's to well, big school. She's well she's well settled to be fair. She's uh she's a good wee character, so she was um uh, she was all good, hey, all good. Um, just in relation to the, you've had an incredible start to the season up in Derry. I know that um the gap has been kind of closed at the top a little bit, but something that's obviously you would have you would have been used to at your time at Dundalk, but something that's happening at Derry is scoring those late late goals. Um, it really shows that there's a persistence in that side at the moment to try and really drive things forward. Ah, uh, we've been we've been really good, you know, and um obviously we had a couple of bad results there previous and um but look it's it's been a good start I, I think if you put everything together it has been a decent start so we're a point clear you know but we have a lot of big games coming up and um as i say like i've been here before and there's a long way to go like in relation to Rory Higgins as a manager, obviously you would have. If I don't think your cross would cross, paths would have crossed the players at Dundalk necessarily, but definitely in, on from a coaching level, um, mm-hmm. you would you would have had that kind of element. What does he bring to? What does he bring to the table that is is different from maybe other managers that you've worked with? Um, well, first and foremost, I think he's brilliant. You know, obviously I played along with him, and um, and now he's my manager. He was my assistant at. At Dundalk, but I think we really only stopped playing previous. Do you know what's he sort of knows what players want and what they need and the right times. Do you know he's he seems to um he's settled on it really well. So no, he's he's been brilliant for me in in every sense really. In relation to obviously Rory knows what it takes to play for Derry. Do you think that that's probably something that he's brought to the table as well as that? A bit like yourself, you know what it you know what it means to play for for a club like mm-hmm. Derry City. Ah, it's demanding. You know, it's people there love their football. You know, and um, we're expected they they do really well. But the least we can do is give a hundred percent. I think that's 
that's the main thing about Derry that they'll get behind you if you if you give everything, and um, that's all you can ask really. And we've been doing that. You've had um, a couple of great results, but one player that seems to just have taken taken the league by storm this season has been Will Patch, and you would have played with him at Dundalk as well. Mm-hmm. He's really settled up there, hasn't he? I think Rory's been brilliant for him. You know, um, manages him really well and knows how to get him ticking, you know, and um, Will's a f- serious talent, you know, and we're lucky to have him. So um, we'll just um, enjoy him while he's here, I think. And the other thing is, is that obviously you've gone back home with with um, a good pal of yours, Michael Duffy. The two you've created a formidable partnership. Derry Dundalk now back at Derry. Unfortunately, he suffered a serious injury. It's a major mm-hmm. setback for him, but um, for for the team as well because he is a very talented player. I uh, back time it was hugely disappointing for everybody, really, but more for more for Michael. You know, he's um as you know him, he's a mm-hmm. he's a good guy. You know what I mean, and um. Amazing player, so of course you're, he's going to be a loss. You're you're probably taking away nearly twenty goals if you combine goals and assists from your team straight away. So, um, yeah, big loss, but he's uh, he's working really hard to be fair to him, and look forward to getting him back. In terms of you know we've we've finished the first series of games. How do you think overall you you and the side have performed? Like obviously the table reads that you're a point ahead, but do you think there's mm-hmm. still that little bit more to come from this Derry City side without giving too much away? I think I think there is. I think even myself included, I can I'll um I I I know I'll do better, do you know, but um I think that's a scary thing. We're we're obviously missing Michael and, and Kieran Harkin and guys like that, you know, so we haven't even got our, our full team out yet and we're in a good position, you know. So but look we've it's an honest, honest group and as a, as the lit winner showed, you know, never lie down sort of thing. So, look, it's a start and you just hope people don't get carried away because it is literally only a start. In relation to, just just to kind of briefly look back, you know, last season, I think uh, your goal against Vitesse was, was kind of seen mm-hmm. around the world. I know that I was, I was at a wedding reception and I was watching it, you know, <laughs> but did you think that, you know, in that moment when kind of the ball broke to you, do you think I was going to produce a bit of magic, or was it just something completely off the cuff to try and beat the keeper? No, I I knew when I was going through that I was going to chop on the boy, so that was on my mind as I was stretching away because I could I could sense him catching me. So, but then after that, then it was just well the the position of the keeper where he was, and as you know, like I, I try these things and sometimes they come off, you know. And just in relation to, to Derry City, obviously you have experience of playing in the Europa League in 2016 and then 2020 with Dundalk. You know, you've you know, you've know been one of the players that have been, in my personal opinion, that, that shone in those things because you were given kind of the freedom. Europe seems to really suit you. Mm-hmm. Do you think Derry is in a position now, without putting too much pressure, that they're kind of in a position now where they could build on and be the next team like Shamrock Rovers that could try and break the mould, then Dundalk, and maybe it's maybe it's Derry's turn. Maybe so. I think I think that has to be your aim. It's it's my aim anyway, and um, there's nothing better than playing in Europe. Um, you know, it's uh, it's the highlight of the year, especially for me. I think, um, and as you say, the style sort of suits me. It's um, it's it's all possession based, and you know, um, all good teams. So, but as 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 you said there, like it's has to be what everybody shoots for, you know, and why not? Right, Patrick, listen, thanks very much for taking the time to speak to us. We hope to speak to you again, but um, just in relation to this week's uh, matches, what's your thoughts on that? Um, a tough game, you know, it's um, usually a good side and um, we played them down there and we, you know, we left it lit sort of as well and we obviously got the three points, but they're a really good side. We're exciting players that, I really like the boy Liam Kerrigan, to be fair. I think he's been, he was fantastic down there against us. So mm. definitely wants to watch. Well, UCD have been a, a, a massive hotbed of talent. Like, you you know, you would have played with, with UCD graduates, Ronan Finn, Keith yeah. Ward, um, yeah. Andy Boyle, Kieran Kildoff, yeah. uh, I think Dave McMillan, just to name but a few. It's it's It really is the kind of the academy of, of, of Irish football. Uh, they always produce, always get good players. And, um, uh, as you say there, just obviously you look at Funner and and Robbie Benson, just to name a couple. Who I forgot about Robbie. League, uh, <laughs> League of Ireland, probably you would say legends now, especially Funner after what he's won and stuff. So, no, they always produced. 
Well, listen, uh, Patrick, thanks very much for taking the time to speak to us today. Uh, and hopefully we'll speak to you uh, in the Brandy Well or somewhere soon. Signed. And that was Patrick McElhenney who spoke to us earlier on in the programme. We're just getting Dean McManamy from it, from Longford Town. Just, he's just brushing his, how would you say, putting on the makeup in the in the background. He should be with us in just a couple of seconds. He's been described as a tenacious midfielder by the Shamrock Rovers as he's on loan with Longford Town. And he'll be having a chat with us in just a couple of seconds. Dean, great to have you. Hello. There's me. There we go. I'm very, very well. Thanks very much for joining us here this afternoon. Dean, uh, first of all, starting with uh, just last week's result, uh, a, a good win against Bray Wanderers. You must be delighted. Oh, yeah, unbelievable. And obviously, the, the night before, I mean, you can't beat them. Them games when last week of the games, the winner, look, you've seen, uh, obviously, we scored in the second half early, came out fast. And then, obviously, Bray got the goal. We just stood keeping and showed in the last one. Um, just in relation to the, it, just for yourself, Dean. You know, you 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 signed for Shamrock Rovers, but you've gone on loan to Longford Town. Like, what was the idea behind that? Was that just that Stephen Bradley said to you that to go and get some experience, or was it that something that you wanted to do personally to get some get some game time under the belt? Yeah, of course. Uh, obviously, last season I was playing North Ends for Rovers, and then obviously. I was with the first team nearly most of the weeks and then coming into pre season this year I had it in the kind of back of my head that I was going out on loan because you see the players better in my position that Rob was half and then obviously Jack Jack on my back kinda knew I went for the door on loan because it's 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 hard to get into that game and it would do me justice going on loan because I'll get the experience and I get the game time but so the gaffer came to me I said, I think it would be the best option for you. And I agreed with him. And then he said, uh, obviously, Longford came in. They're looking more to, to want to run you on loan for the year. What do you think? I thought it was a no brainer to be trained in Pallet. So it's only four minutes down the road. And then up in Longford, the last second week or so. So it was a no brainer for me. Uh, just you know, you're speaking about Sean McGrover. There, you're talking about Jack Byrne and and those kind of players. Did you get an opportunity to train with those players at any stage last season? Um, I came in the year Jack left the Cypress, mm -hmm. but everyone else, I did all of them, unbelievable players. Like like with that Danny Mandrews and the Richies. Like if I, I was there when Joey Joey O'Brien was there as well, mm -hmm. it was a big help big for the young young lads coming in. And uh, yeah, all of them are top class players. Like they really are. Like like I know even from from speaking about players around the league, like Joey O'Brien is regarded as a very regarded very very highly as as in terms of a of a player. How do you think in relation to a coach? Is he going to be a Charles? Well, say say it's the same as a player. He's very very demanding. Like that's that's what you expect from him. Like when you come up from the academy and. You're training with the first team, like you know, it doesn't matter who you are, like, or you have to work hard. Uh, if you don't work hard, it, it lets you know. Like, that's the thing about Joey's that's that's good. In relation to just Gary Cronin, um, he arrived in from Longford this year after being at Bray. Um, in terms of a manager, in terms of a coach, um, how have you found him in terms of your development? Yeah, he's a very good manager, he's a good one to one manager, like, all these. Says before, they just go out and enjoy it. It's no pressure on you. Just play your game. You know what you're good at. Stick that and just enjoy yourself. At least it is. Just work hard. You can have a game, and we have been. You see, seeing us about eight games, we've only lost one. So uh, yeah, we're doing good. He's, he's a good coach. I'm enjoying it. In terms of long for ten, like we we spoke to Jack there, Jack Lynch from Treaty and I just just before you come on there, like the the first division is is kind of unpredictable. We just saw today, you know, Ian Morris has been let go from Waterford. Um, you know, they're 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 in a kind of a they're in a position that they probably wouldn't want to have been. You're looking at kind of surprise packages in Wexford and Wexford and things like that. Like the first division is very unpredictable, but from your experience, it must be very competitive to play in. 
Nå, oh, ja, yeah, exakt. Det er jo færdigt, som der er også ikke noget, kan også være en, uh, at tage en respekt til, og den mm-hmm. dag var en del af. Compared to Dan, to now, like, it's, it's, a big, it's a big challenge. Like, it's obviously uh, coming in, like, you want to be playing against the big pro for the center, and that's what it's the reason, like, the Jack McCormans, and Ed, of course, Bones, and all them. You want to put yourself up to them and show them like, from here that like, I'm good enough to play here, but... Like, it really it, do you think that the gap from your experience from you know playing with with Shamrock Rovers like training with them last year do you think the gap between the first division and the premier division is closing a little bit in terms of competitiveness in terms of quality yeah i really i really didn't i only played one game last year but from training with the first team uh Rovers first team last year yeah i, th- I think it is like just it's getting there like mm-hmm and just the, the final final couple of questions here um just you're you're playing treaty they've you know they they kind of had two big losses against Galway and cork and then they've gone on at a very very good run you guys are on a very good run as well it's it it, it ties it up for a, a very competitive match this weekend yeah exactly it's you know we know three are good so we know what we bring but have to prepare for that and Come out for it, and like we always do, we always like the last eight games. We started every game very good. We just have to continue that into into Saturday night against three. And finally, obviously, you know, there's only one team that gets promoted this year, but used to be one of those sides. The experience counts an awful lot. Longford have gotten promoted by the playoffs before. That's somewhere where you would want to contribute to that again to be part of the playoff playoff makeup. Sorry. You'd li- you'd like to be part of the playoffs this year, you know, the oh, way that it's exactly. very that's, competitive. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I wanted to come here. I know when the Gaffer said it to me at the start of the season, like after getting relegated from the Premier Division, I knew they would be fighting to get back to that. So I wanted to be a part of that competitiveness to get up into the playoffs, even even win the fourth division. Mm-hmm. Okay, listen, Dean. Wish you the very, very best of luck this weekend. Thanks for coming on and chatting to us. I know that you've been you've been in contact with me all day. You've been brilliant, and hopefully, we'll get talking to you before the end of the season. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks very much. And that was uh, Declan McEnany of uh, Shamrock Rovers, who is currently on loan at Longford Town. Now, coming up in our next segment is that we have uh, three interviews from post matches that have happened over the past couple of days. First of all, going to Monday, where Stephen O'Donnell gave his viewpoints after the loss to Shamrock Rovers in the Premier Division in the Tala Stadium. Then we will be going to Drata United, where Lincoln City Loney Sam Long spoke to Con Sheehan, and finishing up Longford Town. Manager Gary Cronin spoke to our reporter Denise O'Flaherty following the last gas win for Longford Town. So there's those segments and those interviews now. I thought the first half, you know, they had plenty of sort of shots edge of the box. Uh, they're going to have uh, uh, possession at times. They've lots of good footballers. Um, but I thought we had some very good passages too. First half, a couple of sloppy moments where it was on to play up through them, but a few moments where we did. And I think ultimately, first half, we had the two best chances at the half. Um, and we didn't take them second half I was a little bit disappointed with us in regards getting control of the game and playing up through and getting good passages away but I thought the game when we conceded there was nothing in the game they had possession but we limited them to very few chances second half I think on the whole we limited them clear cut wise to, to very few chances and um, but from our point of view of carrying a, a threat second half I thought we could have been better but regards work rate and, and the effort of the players uh, I was delighted with, delighted with, epitomised by little Rhino Kane when he came on and making a 50, 60 yard lung buster when we were down to 10 men to get back in and, and save a, a goal opportunity. So in that regard, I'm delighted with it. Now it's just up to us to build build it up uh, quality wise and, and back ourselves. We're playing for, for, for uh, since 2014, the dominant team, club in the country, five league titles, two Europa League group stages. So I want the players to realise that they're at, at, at a massive club and at a club with serious pedigree and take confidence from that which I did I think some, I think a lot, a lot of them did tonight in regards I thought Paul Doyle first half in particular I thought Sean Bone first half thought both of them were excellent and um, you know I was happy with a lot of it but we know physically um, we need to get better as well I think you can see they're their experienced team physicality you know they're all strong big men 
and uh, that's some, an area we need to improve as well but we will uh, but in regards to the work rate and the willingness and the togetherness I was delighted with it confidence okay. play looser choose the right pass uh, game management know where the spaces are and uh, when we did that I thought we played up through them and when we didn't it was sloppiness you know 8-10 yarders on a post um, but from a bravery standpoint I, I was I was happy with us and we didn't resort to when we got it just firing it into channels or that we, we did play it's a lovely surface to play on so lots of positives but you know I think some nights you, you these nights are very good because our lads know as a as a collective we know the level we need to get to and um, we're not far off the level but we know we still have a bit to go so you know I'm not going to play the same team three games in a, in a row and um, just regarding where lads bodies are at and that you know um, I want to I have full faith in our squad the lads that came in first half I thought we were very good at times I thought uh, Danny Ke- Daniel Kelly carried a big threat you know on, on the counter when we got him away so I have full faith in our squad I keep telling them that and I'm prepared to make the changes and it's just where I see where boys' bodies are at and what they're capable of. I'm not, as I said, we had two bodies go down on Friday, and from a risk point of view, I'm not just going to throw throw all 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 my deck of cards on the table in regards. And hopefully, you know, in three games in a week, we, we don't get more casualties. So it was there was a, lots of different elements in my team selection tonight. But as I said, I thought the starting team acquitted themselves very well. I thought the first booking, I thought he won the ball, um, and the second booking, like I think Brian's given two fouls away in the whole game, so. I thought that was very harsh, but you know Brian coming back uh, from the sort of scene of the crime where he he done his his cruciate against Sean McGrovers. I thought he was very good. Um, you know, in the main, he's, he's lasted the ninety minutes or all but maybe five or six minutes. So I think he can be very happy with himself. Unfortunately, obviously, we'll miss him. On, uh, he'll be unavailable on Friday. But I think that's that's great for guards physically and mentally of of get, playing that game and playing playing at a good level. Yeah, uh, Robbie just nicked his uh, tweaked his hamstring. I don't think it's a serious one, but he's experienced enough to know his body. So he didn't play on. Another person might try and play on, but he, he didn't play on and came straight off and. And um, Dan Williams just landed awkwardly on his ankle and just rolled it. So uh, we assess him, see how we go with him. Um, there's no break, so you know, hopefully he, he, he's he's a quick healer and we get him back ASAP. I don't know. We'll see. I, I'd say Dan obviously is out, and we'll see what Robbie. We'll see how Robbie progresses through the week. Yeah, look, a lot of teams. There's no gimmies in this league. Uh, previously, never really was a gimme. Previously, there's real outstanding weak teams I don't think there is this season so um, Shelburne's going to be a tough game as you said they're away for them um, their last two away games am I right in saying they've gone to Sligo in one and they've gone to Derry in one so that tells you all you need to know and obviously they had a, a disappointing result for themselves tonight Tonight, but that'll make them a big danger you know they've, they've a set way of playing and you know, it's up to us to freshen up for the week and, and be ready to be ready to rock for Friday. No, but you want to get results in Tala, you know. Uh, ultimately, we want to be out of position, and I'm not ruling that out. That does dictate our season, um, how we perform against against the top teams, home or away. So, you know, we're not we're not, we're not far away, as I said to them. But we, like it is, I judge every game on its merits, and I felt the game there. Um, first half, I thought we'd do best chance of taking half. I thought we limited a few chances, but I would be on our behalf. I would like us to our, our sort of pass, sort of selection, and and, or, and carrying a threat. I would have liked a bit more from the second half. Sam Long spoke to uh, Con Sheehan at Drogheda United after their impressive one-all draw against uh, Derry City, the league leaders, on Friday night. Uh, Con spoke to the Lincoln City goalkeeper about his time at, and his reaction and his time at Drogheda United so far. It's much um, mentally uh, to keep going, keep the concentration. Um, you know, they, they definitely had a large chunk of possession, especially in the second half. But, um, the way we dug in was brilliant. Um, ourselves, we created chances. Um, and, you know, everyone did their bit to get the point. So, yeah, we obviously uh, pulled the point and uh, looked, looked towards Friday. Uh, no, Saturday, is it? Yeah, Saturday. Saturday yeah. Um, and, and looked to try and get enough good result. Absolutely. And uh, talk us through that save in the first half because I certainly couldn't explain it anyway. <laughs> yeah, well... Um, Look, he's come down the side. Um, I'm getting set for the shot because um, I, I, I thought he was going to shoot, and then obviously he's, he's come across, and then 
as a keeper when that happens, you've got to just kind of throw yourself. And, um, so, um, yeah, and look, maybe on another day he scores it, he gets a better contact, but you know, all you can do as a keeper is keep it out. So, yeah, I'm so happy with that. But, but everyone was brilliant today, so can't fault anyone. Definitely, and that's a, a few draws you've got now where you kind of had to grind it out. Do you think there's enough there to start turning them into wins? Of course, of course. We've got, we you saw tonight, we made opportunities even when we looked under the cosh, um, we made opportunities and, and all it takes is one end to go in and, and it turns, it seems like a good result into a, a, an amazing result. So games like that, if, if we can do that on Saturday and, and games in the future, we can definitely turn them draws into a win. Longford Town's manager Gary Cohen spoke to Denise O'Flaherty after their dramatic last-minute winner over Bray Wanderers. And what, here's his reaction speaking to our final whistle reporter. Gary Cronin, all wins are good, but a dramatic winner against your former club. Nice. It was a, it was a, it was a nice feeling, obviously, to be honest with you. But uh, to, I didn't really too much into the former club part. Like, you know, it's, uh, it was all about the three points. It's, it's Longford Town wanting to win. And, um, you know, we came here to get that. And we did. It's funny how football works, to be honest with you. We look back at the home game where... You know, we played a hell of a lot better, played a hell of a lot more chances, should have won the game easy. And tonight, you know, it was definitely a much more even game. It looked like it was one all. And um, delighted to get the last minute, last that last kick uh, winner. So, uh, yeah, keeps our momentum going. So happy with that. Town supporters would have taken, you know, a draw here because Bray had a good few chances in the first half. So half wore on, Town got into the game. Then second half, you must have said a few words mm. at half time. They were a lot different and then obviously uh, took the lead. Yeah, I wouldn't say a blind man could say, but you know we were we were below par uh, in the first half, and um, we knew that. Uh, obviously, what everyone watching would have known that because we've been excellent. The lads have been absolutely fantastic, and uh, from what we produced to what we produced in the first half was it wasn't poor, but it was just below par, and um, that's a few facts at half time saying this. We need to be better at certain things, and um, we need to have a little bit more intensity in our play. We brought that in the second half, got our goal, and. Disappointed not to see out the clean sheet. I know we won the game. I can't ask for everything, I suppose. But you know, I just felt as 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 um, as the game wore on and, and Bray got more possession, I still felt confident we were able to see them and shut them out and uh, for a zero. So we were disappointed to see them in the corner. But look, all made better in the end. Yeah, talking to Eric Malloy the other night, he was saying, you know, frustrated and upset after that game against Bray because obviously if it was a boxing match, you would have got points and unfortunately got nothing out of yeah. it. So for a lot of players, maybe you might not have realised it, but a lot of players that was in their mind. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I mean, sport is a, a lot of us about mindset, and um, the, the psychological part of the game is big, uh, particularly these days. And it would have, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, because we knew we left three points behind. Not only only one, we left three points behind the last day. Um, today, you know, you'd have walked out with a point the way the game went. You would have said, "Yeah, that's fair enough." So yeah, we clawed we clawed some points back. I think today, but um, look, the lads fully really deserved that. That bit. I wouldn't say it was a stroke of luck, it was an actually once the ball came out of the air, Joe Power done brilliantly well not to just snatch it, he took it down, a bit of composure and Darren found the run to, to be slipped in, so um, from our point of view it was a composed goal and composed finish, but um, yeah, it just brought us the three points that we came here for And games are 90 plus, they're not you know 90 minutes or 80 minutes, you know they are that, that 90 plus and until the referee blows the final whistle that's six games unbeaten as well you've only lost one game yeah, yeah. this season as well and it was disappointing the lads are giving you all. Uh, 100%. Um, you just mentioned on the, on the on the last minute goal, we had that feeling of war. We got two points in the 95th minute. And so we know it goes around. Um, so when it happens for you, it's great. you got to enjoy that part of the game. But the lads have been absolutely You fantastic. had a drink the last time, that winner, and you were depressed. I think I don't drink, but I was depressed as well. So are you, are you going to have a drink now to celebrate? Well, let's see. <laughs> it's too early in the evening. The kids probably say, no, you can't. But... Look, I, I just have to compliment the players. They've been brilliant. They dug deep today without playing particularly well. And uh, we got a result. And um, yeah, it's a tight knit, knit squad. We have a few walking wounded there today. I was um, going to say that. I was going to ask after you had two players you had to, they were forced on you, two changes Aaron yeah. Robinson and Ryan. I know you're not a doctor, you're a yeah, manager. But well, <laughs> look, we'll assess them. Aaron had a doctor see him at half time. There's obviously an issue there. I'm not sure if he'll make the weekend. Uh, hopefully, it's not too serious. Um, we also have. Uh, Ryan came off. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's not too serious as well, and and that's where the, the squad comes in, you know. And the, the lads took deep when when they, when they come on, and um, but we need we need players to put other players under pressure from competition of, of places anyway. So to be successful at this moment in time, listen, 
we're not we're not exactly where we want to be. We're building, it takes time. Um, but the important thing I always say to players is while you're building and while you're getting there, it's important to put points on the board along the way, whichever way we have to do that. And to be fair, they, they put trumps on that. End. After the Waterford result today, Town are firmly in third place, and you've got Treaty now at home on Saturday before two big games on the road. Yep, yeah, uh, and listen, we know we, we know they're coming. That's a tough weekend for us in, in Cork and away to Galway. But listen, I don't look beyond the next game because you know you take your eye off the ball and and, and you don't pick up your your result. Uh, we a tough game against Treaty. They'd be a good side. They'd be a good side, and um, yeah, we'll prepare. I'll actually go home and watch that game because I think they kick off a quarter day tonight. So I'll go might watch. Have a drink. Yeah, I might have a drink and watch Treaty tonight. Um, but Tommy Barrett's sides are always hard to beat. Uh, resolute. Um, and they have added this year they have a little bit of quality and they have Ben the corner up front now as well who, who knows where the goal is so I don't think it's any easy games I think today proved that and um, even the Atlone win when we won against Atlone it was nearly all half time they put it up to us for a good amount of the game yeah we came through obviously and that was expected but at the same time there's no easy games and that was uh, Denise O'Flaherty and uh, Con Sheehan, who spoke at both uh, Longford Town and Drogheda United this week. We're going to look at the fixtures and the results uh, from what's happened in the past couple of days because there has been two series of games. We've had a match day 10 and a match day 11. So let's look at match day 10's results starting with the uh, in the Premier Division. Bohemians drew 2 all with Finn Harps while Derry City lost to Shelburne in what was a bit of a shock result. Dundalk drew uh, beats Sligo Rovers 2-1 while UCD lost to Drogheda United 2-0 and then Shamrock Rovers bet St. Patrick's Athletic 1-0. In terms of the Easter Monday fixtures which happened on Monday night, uh, Bohemians comprehensively beat uh, Shelburne 4-1 while St. Patrick's Athletic came from behind to defeat UCD 2-1. Sligo Rovers defeated uh, Finn Harps 1-0 while Shamrock Rovers defeated Dundalk thanks to a Danny Mandrew goal in the second half while Drogheda United, as we were speaking there, had a one-all draw with Derry City. We're going to look at the standings here at the moment for the Premier Division. So starting with that, we've got uh, Derry City still top of the pile on 24 points, while Shamrock Rovers are sitting just behind them on 23 points with the way that the results have fallen. Shamrock Rovers are currently, or not, uh, sorry, Gamalash Gale, uh, St. Patrick's Athletic are currently in third place on 17 points, followed by Sligo Rovers on 16, while Dundalk are sitting in fifth position on 15 points joined tight with Bohemians so and then at the bottom you've got well I wouldn't say the bottom would only be that disrespectful but Drogheda United are currently in seventh position just two points behind Dundalk and Bohemians in that fifth and sixth position respectively while Shelburne are sitting just one point behind them and then you've got Finn, Finn Harps on seven points in the ninth position while UCD are currently bottom when it comes to the Results that have happened in match day 10 and match day 11 of the first division. Um, we'll start with match day 10. Athlone Town drew with Treaty United 1 all, while Cork City were held to a nil all draw by Bray Wanderers. Galway United um, were defeated Waterford 1 0, while Wexford defeated Cove Ramblers 4 2. And then on Monday, as we know, there was another series of games. Waterford were beaten by Cork City, and that seemed to be the last game for Ian Morris as he has been relieved of his duties at the Blues. Um, just 11 games into the season Bray Wanderers uh, lost to Longford Town as we were, as was reported there a last gasp winner to clinch the tie there Cove Ramblers defeated Athlone Town 3-2 while Treaty United defeated uh, Wexford 2-1 and that was also a last minute goal and with just last minute goals in the first division just seem to be a, sta a staple at the moment let's look at the table of the standings for the first of it uh, for the first division and as we can see Cork City top of the pile and 23 points followed by Galway United on 20 and then in as you can see in third place is Longford Town followed by Waterford who are currently sitting in fourth place now here's where things get really really interesting you've got Treaty United that are currently on 13 points in fifth position you then have Wexford who are on 12 and Bray Wanderers who are on 10 at this moment in time, any of those teams could make up that second, third, fourth uh, place, play, uh, the fourth, fifth places for the playoffs. So it's a really, really exciting time in the first division. We keep saying it every week. It's extremely competitive. 
Cork City currently top in the pile, but they'd be looking over their shoulder because Galway are firmly on their ta- on their tails, and Longford are sitting pretty in that third position. Now we're going to look at the fixtures if are coming up this weekend in the Premier Division, starting with Finn Harps will be away to St Pat's Athletic in Intercor, while Bohemians and Shamrock Rovers will be facing each other off in the Dublin Derby. Don't get any bigger than that. Dalyman Park will no doubt be a sellout. Derry City will be playing UCD, while Dundalk will be at home to Shelburne, followed by Sligo Rovers against Strahi United. And in the first division, Wexford will be playing Waterford, while Cove Ramblers and Cork City will face each other off in another in the uh, Cork Derby, as we'd call it, so to speak. And then you've got Galway United at home to Bray, while Longford are playing Treaty United. So that's my lot for this week. I hope that you have enjoyed the podcast. It's been a pleasure. My thanks very much to Dean McManamy and to Jack Lynch. And earlier on in the programme, we also had Patrick McElhenney. My thanks to Colleen Duffy, uh, who was on produ- production and sound this evening. Just coming up next, we've got the rugby show with uh, Luke Delaney here on whistle.ie. while coming up after that is the Women's National League show which will be hosted by Alana Canan so plenty more content here this evening but for now wherever whatever League of Ireland ground you're going this weekend make sure it's a good one I've been Kieran Callan take care and have a great week <laughs>